Our communion uh, sharing, word of communion this morning, is from Ezekiel chapter 18. It is entitled, Get Yourselves a New Heart. So I want to read a little bit of scripture from Ezekiel 18, starting verses 19 and 20. God speaking, he says, Yet you say, Why should the Son not bear the guilt of the Father? Because the Son has done what is lawful and right, and has kept on my statutes and observed them, he shall surely live. The soul who sins shall die. The Son shall not bear the guilt of the Father, nor the Father bear the guilt of the Son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. Skipping to verse 25. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not fair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not it my way which is fair and your ways which are not fair? When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies in it, it is because of the iniquity which he has done that he dies. Again, when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness which he has committed and does what is lawful and right, he preserves himself alive. Because he considers and turns away from all the transgressions which he committed, he shall surely live. He shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not fair. O house of Israel, is it not my ways which are fair, and your ways which are not fair? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, every one according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, so that iniquity will not be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed, and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. For why should you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Therefore, turn and live. So I want you to take a moment and think about what's been going on around the world. Just a moment. You don't have to be a sociologist to see evil uh, in action on a daily basis. Stealing, killing, destroying. You can't go two days without one of these atrocities making the headlines. Sometimes it's every day. Society is crying out for justice, and rightfully so. The problem is the justice being preached in the protests and panhandled by powerful politicians isn't really justice at all. Here in Ezekiel, God teaches us through his prophet what true justice looks like. True justice is a man bearing the guilt for his own sins. True justice is forgiveness for the wicked who turn from sin. True justice is condemnation for the self-righteous who participate in and use their platforms to propagate sin. True justice requires every individual to give an account of their own thoughts, actions, and beliefs before the throne of God. And true justice does not hold children accountable for the sins of their parents. Notice how God says in verse 30, I will judge you, everyone, according to his ways. And this is God's judgment according to Ecclesiastes 7.20. There is not a just man on earth who does good and does not sin. This world is full of evil because it's full of people. And there's, here's the thing about people. As God reveals in Jeremiah 17.9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. I know a brother who says, wherever you go, there you are. Well, wherever you go, there you take your desperately wicked, deceitful heart. That's why it's so easy to join others and march against the man, but when it comes to the day-to-day -day grind, nothing ever changes because we're too busy judging each other for the sins of our parents to let God in to clean up the sins in our own hearts. The most popular verse quoted by people who criticize Christianity comes from Matthew 7, 1. Judge not that you be not judged. But nobody quotes the next four verses. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. With the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? How can you say to the, your brother, let me remove that speck from your eye? And look, a plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite. First, remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. 
Jesus wants to save your life in eternity. Jesus wants to change your life in the here and now. Church, let's forsake the spirit of the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy and embrace the heart-changing spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who offers us abundant life in his spirit. And this is what the Lord's Supper reminds us about, how Jesus came to do for us what none of us could ever do for ourselves. He took the pain we deserve in his own body. He paid the price for our sin with his own sinless blood. And he freely gave us a way back to God the Father through faith in God the Son. And so let's partake together. Yeah. Try to get that cellophane off the top to get your little wafer out. The Lord Jesus, on the same night he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, you tell us to get a new heart and a new spirit. Lord, I want that this morning. We want that this morning. We want new hearts filled with your love, your mercy, your grace, your truth, your light. So, Lord, fill us with your spirit anew. Keep filling us. Lord, teaching us your ways, teaching us how to love a lost world and live as a light for you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.